Welcome to the Spin Wiz Comic Show. Whoa. From Raleigh, North Carolina. Join us for exclusive interviews with the publishers, bringing you the newest titles in indie comics, web comics, movies, and more. No way. Way. And now, here's your host, Jeff Palumbo. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the stream. For those that you were trying to check in and check out and check back, we're here. Um, and I have an amazing person for you, with you, with me tonight for your your ever enjoyment, entertainment, fulfillment on a Sunday night. Uh, if you're here live, thank you so much for being here. If you're here on YouTube, thank you also for being here. Um, my guest tonight is one of two people that was supposed to be on. Unfortunately, uh, Alex had some Wi-Fi issues because 2020 and kind of that stuff happens. So he unfortunately uh told me that he has to rely on this gentleman we have on here which was uh one of two uh he's been on the show before alex is not pleased that mike is once again going to take the spotlight away from him uh but he is and it's going to be amazing anyway so you know him you love him the creator of black jackets one and two talking about new content tonight uh it is Mike Tiener. Welcome to the stream, buddy. Good to be back, man. I'm I'm excited to talk about Midnight Highway with you, obviously. So thanks for having me. Heck yeah. I'm actually I had Midnight Highway up and everything was all set. And then, and then everything went then destruction everything hit. <laughs> and uh yeah. So I'm gonna right. drop that that in here. So let's start this while I'm looking for it again, because why not? Um, and I'll probably, I'm going to have to kick it while we're on the stream. Cause I actually haven't kicked it yet. And I have also haven't read it yet. And I love the eighties. Oh. <laughs> so All right. that's kind of my thing, but why don't you tell us, obviously you have already created, um, multiple comics with bag, but your, your company or studio is bad bug media. Um, you're a partner of spin with comics. This one, however, is something that's brand new super sweet i'm trying to find a summary of it so i can read it live um but you did this with alex Midday, correct yeah yeah All right. and i've got the summary pulled up so i'm happy to break it down but yeah we uh I'm, this is when i wanted to make comics i had certain ideas stored away because i wasn't ready to do them because either they weren't fully realized or I the stories were so important to me that I needed to wait until I got better at what I was doing before I would try to move along with those. And Midnight Highway is one of those. So I've had this kind of in my back pocket, you know, from the beginning. And Alex Madey was just the perfect partner for this. I, I couldn't really fully conceive it on my own. I needed somebody else to really keep me in check and also contribute to a lot of the ideas and potential. And Alex is just—he's just got such a wild mind that uh, it really, uh, really allowed us to go off the rails with a lot of the concepts and, and really just uh, our plan for the series. He, uh, he was definitely a huge contribution to that. So it's been nice to have a partner uh, on the book uh, and, and working more closely on this one than I have with previous partners on books. I've worked with other creators before. But that's been more of a producer writer relationship and this time it's it's co-writer um co-creator so it, it, he's he's very much involved with uh uh the conception and production so it's been it's been great to work with him on it and then you brought in alexander Melishev and yes. hedwin how the hell do you say hedwin's yeah, last name we we say head and alex i mean that's like, we keep holy it short. cow yeah right? yeah it's, where are these so guys from up. uh uh alex is from russia and um hedwin is from mexico i believe okay yeah it make that would make sense the the last yeah. nurse the last name sounds uh latin american so yeah. Uh, or Latin in general, because obviously if he's in America, Mexico, he isn't American. But <laughs> Latin, regardless. Uh, well, I, I know he's definitely not um, American. Like, his his English is very broken. Like, he has to run things through translator, and some things don't come out right. And I make fun of him for that. So, <laughs> I know I, I know that, uh, yeah. And I know, I know it's a, I know Russia is a very, very, very large area. But please tell me that Alex and Stan Yak know each other somehow. <laughs> 
I, I think they do because Stan did a piece for Midnight Highway and he brought up Alex. Uh, he at least knows his art. I don't know if he knows him personally, but um, I shared with Stan some of the interior art and he acknowledged that he knew who uh, Alex was. So um, I don't know if they live close to each other or if they've done cons together or if they worked on other projects before. Hard to say. Not yeah. really sure. I mean, it's a small world in, in the the comic community, especially when you're that type of artist, because the art looks absolutely bonkers. I, I love it. And the, the 3D art that you guys have that you've transitioned for the Kickstarter, yeah. where the hell did you come up with that idea? Man, it, it was really... <laughs> so I can't overly get it. I gotta apologize, because I'm going to... It's like, awesome. Um, we, we, we wanted to do as much as we could with the, the book and, and really even go beyond a book with this with this story but anyway um the 3d was something that just kind of um i had a friend um uh colors jason smith he did a couple of test uh pages in 3d i was just out of curiosity i just wanted to see the turnaround time and things like that um and um i showed it i showed it to alex and alex was just kind of on the on the fence at the time about it because we were still working on just getting the basic book done. Um, but then we, um, my fiance uh, knew a local artist that primarily does illustrations in 3D. And so I got a hold of him and he did all the pages to the book because the book, you know, the ink side of the book, you know, all the inked pages are done. So I gave him the whole folder. He flipped them in like two days, got them all. Uh, rendered in 3D with depth mapping so that it's actual 3D. It's not like the whole thing just seems kind of wonky. Every single item comes out at different ranges to you, so it's like legitimate 3D. Um, showed that to Alex, and Alex was like, oh, my God, yeah, we got to do this. And uh, so we uh, we put that on there as a reward. And we made it we made it kind of cheap to get to that. Like even if people do PDFs, if they do the $9 PDF, it gets them all the digital rewards, like literally everything, and the three D version of the book. Like I, uh, it's it's so worth seeing that book in three D. Once you've seen just a few pages, you want to see them all. Do you still need the glasses? You do still need the glasses, and you do need those blue red, just the ones mm -hmm. that we yeah, the, the ones old we had school used. cheap ones. Yeah, yeah, we're going to ship those with everybody that backs. Uh, the physical tier that gives you the three D print. So that one's the Kickstart My Heart tier. Mm -hmm. And you'll get a pair of glasses uh, with the book, so that way. Kickstart my heart tier. Un momento, because that's the one I'm getting. <laughs> okay. Time after time, time after time, 3D. Time after time, 3D, and print then plus time after time, 3D. Print and then plus. Kickstart that'll get you the, that'll give you heart. the PDF. Yeah, that'll get you the PDF 3D. So, so kickstart my heart volume one print 3d volume one print 3d volume one pdf volume one pdf all digital exclusives yes oh, and there are a lot of digital gosh. exclusives like there you know, really a lot are of, there's there's so much stuff that we're throwing in there's 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 deleted scenes there's so many different versions of the script we're giving people really just we want everyone to see all the mistakes we made or bad decisions that we had at one point in time with the story i mean mm -hmm. like we want to. We want everybody to really see how far we came with the book from where it started to now. It's kind of crazy looking at the book as it's nearly complete now. Looking at it now versus what it was in the beginning. I'm glad that we took some time with this one. Um, not to say that the earlier versions weren't great. It's just that they were very different. And what we settled on, I, I don't know if there'd be anything that we would change or do differently with this book. That's why we're so excited, is because we really feel like this book's like damn near flawless. Like and that sounds arrogant, I know, but like we just we were so careful with this one that we wanted to make sure everything looked great and we weren't wasting any pages and making sure that you know it really whipped along. I love it. I think I want to do the. Um, I'm going up one. I'm going to go to the early bird radio GAGA -G -A plus all pinups. Radio Gaga. So, oh, that <laughs> that was Gaga, not G A G A. Yeah. Okay. I yeah, just... yeah, Radio Gaga. That's a uh, Queen song. Yeah. Um, we uh, uh, we had we had talked about. There's so much stuff that, and we haven't really talked about everything that we're going to do with this series just yet. But because um, we're careful, you know, like we don't want to overcommit. Sure. You know, um, but one thing that we definitely wanted to do was make a radio show and use the radio show as something that happens in between issues. So mm -hmm. 
issue one goes out and then we have a podcast that goes up and we have a few episodes of the midnight highway radio which uh fortunately i have a friend named tom riser that i knew from college that uh is it's you know he's really a radio host so uh he came with years and years of experience so he chomped at the bit to do the um the radio voice and and really basically write edit and and direct the uh the radio show so that's his baby um he his character who he is in the radio show is who the character is in the book because in the book the main character's name's alex and the radio comes on uh it's like hijacked by this this you know interdimensional radio show that starts talking to him sometimes breaks the fourth wall at times narrates different sections of the story it's this really living breathing character the radio is 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 so much of a character the same way that alex's car is and alex is so we kind of wanted to dedicate a radio show or a podcast to that radio dj um and that's kind of the purpose of including that with the rewards is just kind of introducing you to that idea mm-hmm. and we're going to continue to do more episodes as after issue one gets out there in everybody's hands I want to be a voice. You want to be a voice? Hell yeah. I mean, I, I used to do I used to do like radio stuff back in the day for advertising and all sorts of other stuff and um yeah, I would it's one of the VO th- it's actually one of my things that I enjoy is doing voiceover work for people. Cool. Well, um, you know, I'm not you good what, at it, but I think you I think you sound great, man. You have a lovely voice. I think you'd be perfect for it. You, you are I'll, so I'll tell nice. you about one of the tiers that we did then. I mean, it's 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 out now, but obviously we're doing more episodes of this, right? So, um the first episode is pretty much done, but on episode 2, there's going to be three backers. They already backed that tier, but there's going to be three backers that are going to get to play characters that are invited onto the radio show where the um where Tom's character will interview them and you know talk to them about their experiences on the midnight highway um and uh so they're they're kind of like a contributor to the story like you know they they can tell us what they want to be do they want to be an undead rock star or a ghoul or you know whatever they want to be yeah it's fun (laughs) so so do i have to do rainbow in the dark for a number two or is that a radio gaga plus all which which one should i do to be on the show Okay, that one's that one's done. Son <laughs> I'm of a... I'm sorry, uh, uh, but that's only for uh, the second episode that we only did this pledge for. So we did we limited three backers because there's really only going to be four segments per radio show. Mm-hmm. So we did three, and um, you know we're going to get with those backer, backers after the campaign and go ahead and start building out the second episode with them. After that, when we do a third or fourth episode, dude, I'll reach out to you. you <laughs> let me know. We'll give you a spot. You let me know. I can't wait. <laughs> I cannot wait. Oh, it's going to be fantastic. Be it's we, we think that's going to be a lot of fun. I don't think people realize what the idea is yet. It's kind of, we were, Alex and I were both kind of shocked that people backed it before they even really got to hear anything. The only thing, the only thing that we've shown so far outside of a project update that I put recently, uh, kind of demonstrating a little section of Tom's um, radio show was we used Tom's voice in our project video. So Mm -hmm. um, you'll hear, you know, the voice of the Midnight Highway in in the project video. And I think, I don't think we really talked about that being the same person or not a whole lot. But yeah, people have been back in that tier regardless without even hearing anything from that show yet, which is kind of exciting. Well, I think it's just different. You know, one of the things we wanted to do on Spin was was actually start doing voiceover, live voiceover work, flipping through the comic. Um, just because we thought that would be super fun and different and we still want to, but we need to make our, um, our frames be able to move the way that a, a movie or a show would. So it brings the viewer or the audience member through it as if somebody is speaking that quick. Right. Otherwise you get lost on one page. You don't know really where you are. So you kind of have to have both things together. So as soon as we have that up and loaded and rocking and rolling maybe black jackets number one or maybe even well i don't see now you're gonna have this so that's gonna supersede anything cool i do but um (laughs) (laughs) but bring bring you on back and be like let's do this so um should the what's this what's this about is the midnight highway in the 80s is that your your summary right there yeah right um so um there's there's several different summaries that we've had um 
I, I, I think the tagline does it best. Uh, it, it, it's been described as an Alice in Wonderland meets Twilight Zone trip through the supernatural when a teenager stumbles upon a mysterious highway. And that is really the setup. Now, the uh, the inspiration behind it was solely, you know, the 80s horror, science fiction, films and television, comics. Really, a lot of, of the, the, the content that came out of the 80s was definitely the influence of this series. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the, the, the idea, though, is, is that uh, this character, Alex, uh, it just continues to travel down this highway, hoping to get back home. It, it's it's there's no real reason how he ended up onto it. He just he's just on it, and um, it, it think of it almost. And, and I think that's why we use Alice in Wonderland as the example uh, there, because you know Alice accepts her circumstances after so long. She she kind of at first it's it's bewilderment or just you know, confusion. And then after a while, you've just accepted it because you've seen so much now that you're, you're just, you're just ready for the next adventure or trying to move on down the path so that you can get back home, you know? Mm-hmm. And that's, that's Alex as a character, you know, it, it, his, Kelly is his girlfriend. It's the love of his life. He's 17 years old. You know, he's, he's, you know, this is his first and last love, you know, Kelly. So um, everything's revolving around him getting back to her, and uh, he has to experience literally everything supernatural along the way. So the idea about the, the Midnight Highway is that it exists in any plane. Um, you know, it, it's not relegated to one route. Um, you may have been on it before, Jeff. I think I've probably been on it a few times. Twice, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so the, the thing is, is, we've all been on that road late night um, where we forgot that we were driving we missed our turn and we can't remember what we were thinking about when that happened. You know, it just, it was like a flash in a pan, but it, it could have went on for 30 minutes to an hour, you know? And that's kind of the idea here is that it's just this momentary lapse of, of cognitive control. And that's where he's at. And so he's trapped in that kind of world. So everything can happen to him. Um, anything supernatural, is going to be uh, something that he experiences on the highway. And that's why the series is just going to live on and on. And that's why there's so many channels for us to really tell the story, you know, through radio shows, through other creators writing short stories about the Midnight Highway, which we've already reached out to to do. Um, there's so many different channels which we're building the world with. Mm-hmm. I love it. I want to write one. If, do it. E- even if you guys think it's su- if it sucks, you just throw it out, of course. Oh, uh, man, listen, some of the ones that we've gotten so far, Bill Stoddard did one, Ruben Romero did one. Um, we Bill Stoddard, out. that guy came yeah. up again? Yeah, man. Uh, I mean, just Bill. buds, just people we're friends with just saying, hey, you know, if you were, if you had a character and they were on the Midnight Highway, what would be the experience they had that you think would just be... Uh, mind-boggling and, and bizarre and strange and weird and whatever you want to put, you know, do you want to make it scary? Do you want to make it sweet? You know, all things supernatural don't have to be dark and ominous. You know, some things could be inspiring and, and positive, you know, so it's it's really just about what your experience was and that's what they did. So they wrote some really great short stories for it. I love it. Well, if I ever find a free minute, that is something that I would just dig right into and, Go ahead. and, and give, you, give you a eight-pager. Um, well, it, it would be fun for sure. I love the idea. Can I read the, the, what you wrote as a summary? But first in the video, the, that you have up on Kickstarter, there's a car that says midnight highway next to it. Is that an IROC Z? That is a, um, gold, uh, 79 Trans Am. Oh my God. From the back. I'm like, that's totally an IROC. And I, <laughs> and I remember in the eighties wanting an IROC, like, super yeah. bad but i i dig the fact that it's a trans am with the one with the firebird like on the hood we took it off we took it off there because and and it's a funny reason is we just didn't want alex to have to continue to drive or draw the firebird on the hood i get constantly. it <laughs> so I get we it. made it a little easy on him that yeah that would be awful so let me yeah. read this quick for everybody and obviously i already dropped the the link into the chat if you are on youtube watching this just scroll below i mean it's not like you can't find it there's, there's a link right there. Go it's check it out. Find, guys. Yeah. No. So, um, all right, here we go. Let's, let's see if I can't do this. Midnight Highway is an 80s-inspired comic book series about a teenage boy that inexplicably 
ends up on a mysterious road filled with supernatural terror. The further he travels down the highway, the more bizarre and twisted it becomes. The first issue is 21 pages introducing us to Alex, who only wants to get back home to Kelly, the love of his life, but must endure the endless peril of the midnight highway to do so. The writing team of Mike Tiener, Black Jackets, and Alex Madej, Mongrel City Rumble, have shared their own passion for the series below. Yay. That's dope. <laughs> you want me to read the next part? <laughs> I mean, I mean you, yeah. I, I think you did a great job kind of already going through it. And again, yeah. Alex, unfortunately, couldn't be here. I know that now that you're taking like all the, the screen time for it, he's even more just like, oh, God, it had to be Mike. Um, yeah. So we're going to grab him again. And honestly, I, I think this is just ridiculously awesome. And it looks like um, Alex, uh, I don't know how to say her last name, Monik? Yeah, Al yeah, I always say Monik, but then um, uh, Alex Madej said Monique. So first off, like, there's like four Alexes involved with this the, book. There are, I was going to say, like, you, you couldn't name the lead, lead character anything else? Well, the funny thing about that is Al that that name was decided on before I reached out to Alex Madej to be part of it. You oh, know? wow. I um, Alex was a very 80s name. Uh, Last Starfighter, the character from Last Starfighter, his name's Alex. So uh, we just kind of mm -hmm. took that and ran with it. And after Madej got on, you know, that's uh, what the first thing we talked about. I was like, should we change the character's name? And then I kind of gave him kind of a breakdown. It's close to Alice, you know? And, mm -hmm. You know, so we just kind of decided to keep it. And then when we were looking for artists, I was like, hey, I really like this guy's art. And we went with Alexander. <laughs> <laughs> like it was, it was, there was no... No planning involved, just coincidentally, a lot of Alex's are involved with the book. But yeah, yeah. Alex Monick did a pinup for the book, and she's a great artist. She is a uh, great artist. She's a real jerk, though, so it's kind of hard to give her credit. So it's just, I, 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 have, I have a lot of internet feuds with her, but she's a great artist. Um, and really, uh, the pinup, it's just got a lot of color. It's very cinematic. Looks like a film trailer, or sorry, a film poster. Mm -hmm. uh, the way it's set up and framed so yeah. we were really excited to get that back from her yeah she did a great job and um she doesn't have any real to my knowledge doesn't even have a comic yet like she just kind of like yeah I'll, yes i'll start it and i'm like what do you mean you just think you'll start it like you're that talented where you can just pick up comic books and she's like i didn't think so but it did it she does a great job yeah I don't think it's her field, really. Like, I think she, um, I think she's really interested in getting into animation. It looks like she's really big Disney fan, um, and uh, you know, you can see kind of the way she illustrates her characters that they feel very animated. Like, you know, they 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 look like um, they they come from animation. So yeah, it's, yeah. so it's it's kind of funny. We just kind of crossed paths on another book that I was working on. She did a pinup for that and just kept in touch and. She agreed to do this one, and she really, she, we didn't give her m really much instruction at all. She constructed that pinup really on her own. You know, she looked at the page art and um, kind of built something around that. So that's awesome, great. man. You every time you touch something, it like the people that you get together with you and your content is just awesome. Like, Thank you. <laughs> if 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 nothing else, I mean, I think you're a great writer but your ability to put a team together is ridiculous. Like you just, you hit gold every single time. Honestly, this is the most excited I've been about a book that I've been involved with. And I think Alex feels the same way. I mean, I'm, it's such a bummer. He's not here right now. Cause you would be hearing two guys get really giddy over this book, but we, Alexander Malashev and headwinds out of our, our, Really, I mean, they've been complimenting each other because they're we're, we don't have like a group chat where everybody's seeing everything at the same time, you know. Like, Hedwin will finish coloring a page and I'll send it back to Alex so that he can see it. And then, you know, they're in different time zones, obviously. So, I'll get responses back at really random times, but they're both huge fans of each other, like more than I've seen in the past when I've worked with artists. Like, they really, when one person sees the other person's art, they're always like ecstatic over what was just shared you know like they I, I just sent the last page of the book to headwind for him to color and he was just stunned by the last page we're, we're all really excited about the last page so That's awesome. um but he was he was stunned by it and he works i mean he does so much he he works in comics 
so much. He doesn't say no to projects, I don't think. I think he is constantly working on stuff. Um, but he saw that and he was really excited. And he just kind of randomly messaged me one day and was just talking about how glad he got to be on the book. So it's been a huge ego boost for us to have the artists so excited about the book and seeing and championing each other's work on it. So it's been it's been really motivating and inspiring. It helps for sure. I mean, when yeah. people are actually pumped about the project, they work on it that much harder because they're they're into it. Um, Aaron Dowen coming in saying hello. He's, he's hey, saying, Aaron. He's like, you're all right. You're all right with me. <laughs> so, um, yeah, man, I mean, I wish you all the best. What are, what are we kicking at right now? We're at – oh, let me stand to the top. We um, are at – 48 and some change 48 57 next stretch goals at 5k um we we're really zipping our lips over the 8k goal um the stretch or the stretch goal for that one because uh if we don't hit that then we can't do it Mm -hmm. but if we do hit the 8k one then we think that everybody that grew up in the mid 80s uh to early 90s will be really excited about i can't wait I can't. I hope we get there. I, I really do. We got 17 wait. days to go. That's a lot of money, but it would be something that I think everyone would be excited about. I love it, man. I can't wait. This is just fantastic. And obviously, I grew up in the 80s. You know, I was born in 78. So I literally grew up in the 80s and then entered the 90s. I remember the Zach Morris phone. I remember the, the, the rotary phone where you had to dial, and if you messed up, you had to do the whole damn thing all over again. Um, <laughs> And just like, I love this genre and this yeah. time period. So it's, it's, it's a supernatural time period. Like that's the thing. Oh, excuse my dog. It's, right. It is a really, we chose the eighties as the setting because we felt like that gave us the liberty to really explore a really vibrant color palette. Um, and we also felt that we were going to be able to be as absurd as we want. Cause the eighties was really that time where you know they really did push the envelope in terms of you know uh crossing genres and merging genres and and making some really really wild premises for films and and uh horror in particular just really went off the rails in the 80s Mm -hmm. and uh that's and and that's what alex and i i mean you could get us on the phone and talk for hours about all the movies that you know, have really impacted us. I mean, the, the first issue of Midnight Highway is definitely influenced by John Carpenter and, and David Cronenberg. So um, you'll see that in the book and you'll kind of get that vibe. And it's not like we drastically shift gears in issue two, but, you know, um, we, you know, John Carpenter, I think, is arguably one of the most influential directors, especially in the 80s. He had a huge successful streak mm-hmm. in the 80s. You know, he was he was untouchable, we felt so. He definitely played a part and influenced us in terms of how we went with the story. Yeah, I think if I did mine, I would definitely go either Harold Ramis um, or even Tim Burton. Cool. And just like kind of like that time warp, that weird, odd 80s loop that was just so... Even in video, it was just so drastically pinpoint on everything they did for a reason. And obviously Ghostbusters and Beetlejuice both being very comedic, but both kind of spooky and creepy. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, God. Now you got me thinking. I, it's, it's not like I, I don't wish like... I could tell you. <laughs> the hardest part, like for us, has been bottling this up. You know, we've had. We've had so much that we haven't been sharing with people because we don't want to exhaust ourselves and and blow it all really early on. Um, But the enthusiasm and the potential is out there. Absolutely. And the the biggest thing about it for us is like, you know, like, you know, for you, it means something different than like other people that are going to, you know, that write stories. So the thing is, is like, you're going to, you're going to have something and you're going to think about, Hey, what it means to you and, and what, what kind of story you'd want to see about the highway. Alex and I just would spend hours talking about all the different things that we want to do in the story, you know, and us settling on things has been so difficult because Mm -hmm. there's so many ways we could go with it. Um, But when you see, and I wish I could tell you what we're doing in the next few issues, but um, when you see that, it just really blows the lid off the potential. And they are, it is somewhere between fun, spooky, comedic 
dark. Like it, it really, it really does hit all those those triggers uh, in, in such a way that we really feel like we, we're doing a good job of balancing all that. Um, and and in issue one, there there is some there is a comedic element in there that we just we're not touching on really right now. And there's a lot that we haven't shown. Like there is a freaking monster in the book, and no one has seen this thing. You know, we have not shown any pages with it. We have just been so good about just showing those first five, six pages and that's it and not showing anything else. And my God, did the pages just blow up once you see the monster. The colors, everything is just so through the roof. So if you like what you've seen so far, that's like nothing in comparison to what happens next. That's it's awesome. wild. Yeah, we're really excited. <laughs> so Ryan Cummins in the house uh, from Skeletal Press says, I heard the eight goals, a nude photo shoot of Mike Tiener in a bathtub of hot Velveeta mac and cheese. Dude, that's for free. <laughs> that's like, you don't have to get to the AK mark for that, man. I'll do that right now. That's I'll do it awesome. live. That, that. Well, a live is that, is that all you need, Ryan, to back the book, man? I mean, it's a good thing that. Alex is or Alice is already in bed. Good Ryan's lord, a cheap date. I can I mean, do that. Done, done, <laughs> and done, and live on not this show, but another one. Although I bet you we get lots of page views. Uh, Ryan, I can do that. Ruben Romero coming in, looking for the 3D loving from you. That's great. Um, Ruben obviously running his own show now, so you got to see you got tons of love coming in for you, man. Uh oh, we we should probably try to avoid that as much as possible. But love for <laughs> you? Scared. Oh, come on, that's that's I'm scared. That, <laughs> I don't know what they're gonna say. Um, that well, I mean, it seems like a lot of people. Again, you you in general, and we're gonna wrap it up here in a couple of minutes because it's already been our thirty minutes that we said we yeah. would we would promise because you and I can go on also for I hours know, talking I, about I, stuff. I, yeah. Um, I think the good thing about obviously working with Alex, um, but you get along so well with the community in general that it's kind of hard for people not to want to back you, regardless of the content. They like you so much. Uh, I think they like Alice more, but they <laughs> like you so much in that they want to see you succeed and they like seeing you succeed. So the being part of that, it's, it's one of those things. Again, our community is super, super small for everybody out there. That's watching, you know, I have many interviews with a bunch of people. Ruben's going to be on the show soon. Ryan just signed up for uh, in a couple of weeks. I think he's going to be on. Um, and there's probably 40 or 50 of us that are wow. relatively in the, all the same circles together. And I, I'm actually the newcomer. Uh, out of all of them, it's really me that's just starting to come in and just being accepted because I'm not a, I'm one of the only ones that's not a creator. I mean, I am, but not, not to you guys. I, I'm something else. But it's been such a warm community after I broke through the holy shit, he actually knows what he's talking about and he's not full of crap that everybody wants to see each other succeed. But when you pull something like the 3D together and you're pulling other people that are well known out of that group to work on stuff, it's hard, like the the creators gravitate to it, and then readers of those those creators do as well. And I think that's why this. I think you can get to eight thousand. I mean, warm up that Velveeta. <laughs> if that's what it takes, I'll do it. You know, because like, uh, uh, thanks for all the compliments too. Because that's, you know, I I think uh, I, I think everybody feels the same way. You have your up you have ups and downs days. I guess is the best way to say that. So. Um, there, there are days where, you know, you, you get a little bit of imposter syndrome. Alex usually talks about that too. It's like, Hey, is this something that we is, do we really think we can do this? You know? Um, so it's nice that you have a community of people that are really backing each other and supporting each other the way it has been. It's been great. It's been one of the best experiences of my life is just getting to meet all these guys and, and, and laughing my ass off at everything that they say, um, to each other and to me and, and, uh, uh, it's it's just a really good relationship that uh, I've been able to have with a lot of people, and and really the relationship with Alex on this has been fantastic. Um, you know, I, again, I, it's a bummer that he's not on, and I, I can't sing his praises enough. But he's been a, a a great partner on this. It's 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 he's like a brother to me now. You know, so it's it's been exciting. So we're we're really excited to get this out there to you guys, and and we know there's a thousand books on Kickstarter right now, and you only have so much money. Um, it's okay if you can't back it. Like I don't blame you. There's a lot of great books out there right now, but 
um, you know, down the road, we want everyone reading this book at some point or another, whether they're paying for it or it's free. We want some, we want everyone to see this book. Mm -hmm. Yep. And if you can't buy it yet, just share it. Tell other people that this is awesome. And it's, I mean, it's, it's 2020 people get it, but if you could at least share it, that helps a ton. Uh, cause every, every new person that hears about it, one of them might have five bucks to throw in. Um, yeah. so, and that's, that's the greatest part of it. So, uh, listen, man, anything else you want to hit on before we, we take off? I want to shout out to the arts cause I don't know if I did a great enough job about that. Um, you know, we got, we have an awesome art team, a lot of great artists have worked on this. I mentioned Stan Yak, mm -hmm. Alex Monick, uh, doing, uh, some, uh, pin art or, or pin up art for us. Um, Lucas and I always mess up his last name. Kowalski, I think is his last name. He, uh, did a great piece. It's a, it's an augmented reality pinup. So you have to download this app called art of Vive. And when you look at the pinup through the viewfinder on the app, that pinup will animate. Um, That's and, awesome. uh, yeah, so we're really, he did a great job on that piece. So those are the pinup artists right there. They did fantastic. We had, uh, Ellie Nichols do a pinup piece that we haven't revealed yet. So we're going to share that pretty soon. Um, Alexander Malashev and Hedwin Zaldivar have been just, you know, made this book what it is. Like, you know, me and Alex, you know, we we sat down and wrote the script and everything, but these artists really made the books. So big shout out to them. So glad we got them. Um, I'm, I'm probably, uh, oh, Mateo Fuentes, who did the 3D version, uh, did an excellent job. And like I said, did it in like two days. We were just blown away how, quick he, how quickly he did it. So, um, I, hopefully I hit on everybody. I'm just trying to think off the cuff here, but, um, we're really excited about all the artists that we've worked with so far on the book and we've got more to show. So there's more artists to reveal that are involved with the book and there's more art to, to share with everyone. So that's it for now, but I wanted to make sure I really gave them props cause they really made this book what it is. And that's what makes it all awesome. So, um, well, listen, man, I, I wish you the best of luck as always, you know, where to find me. It's not like you and I don't talk all right i mean that's not really a big deal but um kevin in here kevin giving you a ton of tacos Ooh, thank you I mean, tons of tacos There's not enough. hey ryan should be too um is that a know, taco is that a taco bell post don't you guys like constantly talk about taco bell and how much you eat it well yeah i mean do you not eat it i jeff do you not eat I, taco bell no i love taco bell i just am so busy and during the day that i can't go out and get taco bell it's they, fast food they took away That's my four busy they people. took away <laughs> my double freaking decker there are so many things on the menu that are good <laughs> like but they took not... away my i love the cheesy gordita crunch but they uh, took that's... away my double decker well they're I'm sorry. I'm I, what you're saying to me right now just doesn't make sense. And I'm like almost <laughs> offended. <laughs> like I'm just Kevin, Ryan, are you guys still there? Say something to this jerk. All right. <laughs> Say something to this guy. I, they took away my favorite. Dude, they took they took a lot away. The Mexican pizza that was one of my favorites. They took that away. They uh, took actually, away potatoes. I Alice. didn't know anybody actually ate the Mexican pizza. What? How dare you? <laughs> they took away the seven layer burrito too. Dude, we were getting so we were getting along so well up until this point. I mean, uh, I'm not, not just agreeing with you. I'm agreeing with you 100. percent I'm just pissed that they took away all my favorites. Dude, they really did. They 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 definitely reduced their menu. But keep in mind, there really there really isn't anything on the menu that's bad. Bad for you, but tastes great. So oh, it tastes uh, delicious. Exactly right. And, and, and no. It's cheap. And now Ryan's not coming on the show anymore in a couple of weeks because he says that I don't like it. And I do. I do yeah, like Taco really, Bell. You're going to have to put out a public statement about this. I, I hope you know. I really, I'm going to have to go like this week and I'm live shocked. stream from Taco Bell on my Instagram channel. Just the fact that I'm eating it <laughs> or bring it back. I'm going to have a live stream this week for lunch. Nobody's going to be like, on. It's just going to be me. And I'm going to invite all y'all and I'm going to say, listen, I'm eating Taco Bell and I'm going to tag Taco Bell in it too, because as if they give a shit that, that, that somebody with a couple hundred viewers who actually, you know, You'd is going to jump in here. You'd be um, surprised. Well, yeah, maybe, you know, it'll be the lunch stream. Come have lunch with me, ask questions and eat Taco Bell. I think that that might even do better than, than this episode right here. I, I would agree with you. I mean, it's it's possible. I'll get Ryan there's, and Kevin and everybody to come eat with me. That's fine. There's there's potential in this. 
I like I, where you're going. I think, actually, let me check my schedule. Let me see if I can actually do this. Give me one second. I, I want to see. I'll get Joe Valen in here too. I don't. I don't think he. Actually, oh, Joe, is he is he a big? Uh, I don't think Taco he eats Bell Taco right? Bell anymore. I don't know. I'll have to uh, ask him. I'll talk to. I'll talk to him. I'll I don't want to. I don't want to throw him under the bus or anything. Um, let uh, me see what my schedule I'll looks do a like. Sidebar with him real quick and, and yeah. see if I. Can, I'll call him right after this. I mean, he lives in Colorado. Don't they all eat Taco Bell there? Like, isn't that? Oh wow! Isn't that? I guess I know where I should be moving to. Isn't that mandatory? (laughs) Um, If the mountains have something to do with it, makes sense. I'm in West Virginia, so I mean, that that would be the only connection I'd make. uh, I I make other ones, but uh, (laughs) all right. So maybe, maybe I'm not saying him. I'm saying in general, people in Colorado. Um, I guess. So maybe on Wednesday Hump Day. Around twelve thirty, uh, I have an exit. I have I'll have work in the morning. So those of you who don't know, I work for Lenovo full time. Uh, I am real, building out their esports program globally for education. Um, and then on, at night, I work on Spinwiz. The I have a meeting until twelve. Regardless of how that goes, I think I come back. I go to Taco Bell, which is ten minutes away. I come back here. And then we have a Q&A with Jeff Palumbo about business or marketing or whatever and eat Taco Bell. And it's just live streamed right here on Facebook Live. I'm going to I'm cutting all this for YouTube by the way. None literally anybody watching this on YouTube is not going to see any of this cuz I'm cutting it. <laughs> but respect God the American money uh bill to tell us Jeff Palumbo Mike Tenner uh Kevin Rotatelli, Ryan Cummins, Taco Bell, Zoom call, book it. Ooh. 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 I mean, we're on Zoom right now. Technically, if everybody, I could invite people on. And <laughs> right. would, so anybody that's in the chat right now, and that being obviously Mike, technically you're part of the chat. Ryan, Kevin, um, Ruben, if you're still here, I, I bet, I don't know if Joe eats Taco Bell, but I bet you we could grab him. Is Wednesday a good day to have a a lunch, a Zoom, a streamed Zoom lunch? Would think, any would anybody do that? I don't think Kevin can. I don't think he's got Taco Bell where he's at. I think that's like the great tragedy of Kevin's life. Do you not have Taco Bell where you are? I see a bunch of red triangles. It makes me think that he is in um, not America anymore. Like, isn't Taco Bell everywhere? Or do you have like, like Wack, Wacko Taco or... Taco, isn't there like another taco Im- joint? Imposter taco. Well, it's it's in Florida. There's a there's a couple taco chains that, that are there. Yeah, I'm trying to think of the other really popular one. Is it Del Tacos? Is that one of them? Um, I think that's another chain. D- like Del that. Taco. That's what I was thinking. Yeah, Del Taco. Kevin, do you not have? Oh <gasps> no, Taco Bell where Kevin is. It's awful. Like, I really feel bad for him. So, Kevin, I think what you can do is you can just come in and not eat anything. And that's all. You you, you don't get to have lunch. We'll all eat Taco Bell, and you just have to sit there, and we'll tell you how good it is. And That's sinister. Or you or you, you go get Del Taco. And but I mean I want Taco Bell to you know to be like no this is this is great this is something that's never been done before have a bunch of comic book nerds sitting about talking about comics and the way life is eating Taco Bell I'm gonna do it it's I'll beautiful. tell you I'll tell you what I will send out a Zoom invite for Taco Bell lunch at on Wednesday twelve thirty Eastern cool it'll be about an hour long uh, we don't have to have it as an hour long. We can chalk, we can chat, we can take, we can take uh, people that actually want to come in and just ask questions. Kevin, you're more than welcome to jump on and we'll just shoot the shit for half an hour to 45 minutes, maybe an hour, eat our Taco Bell, have a soda, maybe, or is it pop? Do you say, do you call it pop? Oh, I, soda. Okay. I call it soda too, but. You used to call it Coke. I live in the uh, French North America. We're too fancy for it. <laughs> <laughs> nerds taco comics i'm ready all right kevin still said he'd be in he'd be in Good. so 12 30 oh. eastern i will send out a zoom invite to everybody i'll create a group right after this and if you feel as though somebody should be part of this lunch you mm-hmm. are welcome to share that zoom link with them 
Awesome. As long as somebody's not coming in and like showing their butt or something, we can't have that. Like that's almost all of them. <laughs> well, like, how do you know the ones that aren't already? No, I mean, un un I don't need uninvited ass. Yeah. And, okay, and, so. I mean, this is purely invited ass. Then you should probably not invite Kevin. <laughs> Just. But he lives in the French. He lives in the French North American. That's I mean, normal for them to do that, though. Francais. <laughs> yes. So it's customary to show your ass there. And I mean. Part I'm French. Just, well, I didn't write the rules. It's, it is. I play it, by them. It is part French. <laughs> Kevin, you're not in Quebec, are you? Quebec? <laughs> are you way up French North? Like that? Quebec is literally. Is that where you are? I didn't know you were in Quebec. Oh is, yeah. Is Behemoth in Quebec? Mm -hmm. No, Behemoth's in L.A. Right? Yeah. All right, we're getting way off topic here. <laughs> by the way, none of this is is ever making it to YouTube, but. <laughs> For those of you that are watching and just shooting the shit, if you want an invite, you can ping me. I will set up a group after this. It'll be hilarious. It'll be fantastic. Wednesday, we'll do it again. Anyway, um, Wednesday night, while I'm here, uh, I don't even know who's on. I, I don't I don't have my computer crashed before this. Mike and I were kind of like I was running around and Mike's just laughing the whole time because I don't actually know who's who's coming up. But Mike, I think I could probably maybe let you sign off now. Um, Alice is probably it, you know, in the other room just crying. She's laughing so hard. This is this is just such a cluster of a stream, but that's why we do this. This is exactly why we have these types of things. So, to end it, make sure if you haven't already, go check out Midnight Highway. Uh, this in the chat, it's in there. The link is in there. If you're watching on YouTube, it's right below. Um, Mike, hang with me just a couple minutes. I want to say goodbye to you offline. I'm going to say goodbye sure. to everybody here. But I do appreciate you being here. Thank you so much, man. No, thank you. Yeah, Thanks, buddy. guys. Anytime. Thanks for Be right to you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that went off the rails. Something fierce. I knew it would. I, I can't have Mike Teener on the call ever without us talking for, I think the last one was like an hour and 20 minutes. And we only actually talked about Black Jackets 2 for maybe 15 of that. And then it just went off into a spiral of crazy, almost like it was the midnight highway and we were chatting together. Uh, whew, throwing another one to Mike his way. So anyway, make sure you go check out uh, Midnight Highway. It's going to be fantastic. Whether you lived in the 80s or not, it doesn't matter. You, you definitely need to check it out. Uh, who do we have coming up in the next shows? While I'm pulling that up, make sure you download our new app on both iOS and Android. Just type in SpinWiz, search for SpinWiz, load it. If you give me five stars, that'd be great. Remember, this is all for the indie guys. Um, Marvel and DC are not invited, so it really is anybody that's just trying to get discovered. Uh, that's what we do, so let me see. Um, oh, speak of the devil, Joe Valen will be on Wednesday night. Uh, Nick Cannon coming in on Sunday uh, uh, from Phoenix Press, then Brian Silverbacks. Ryan is going to be here from Skeletal Press on the 11th. Adam Barnhart on the 14th. Rob Nugent and crew, amazingly enough, Stan Yak's first ever interview live video from Russia coming in on the 18th. We all know Stan. Uh, he's He's just awesome. And then we have Kevin coming in on the 21st. He's right here from Behemoth. Uh, and then it just, then the list just keeps on going. I honestly cannot believe how awesome everybody has been and how quickly this show has picked up over the last month and a half since we switched to Facebook Live from Twitch. I'm not saying Twitch can suck it. All I'm saying is it is a different different group because I stream on Twitch too but I stream here and this has been fantastic. Thank you all so much for supporting Spinwiz Comics. Thanks for supporting all of the comic creators that are on Spinwiz Comics and you haven't already, go read them. Just that's what they all want. Go read it. If you like it, buy it. If you can't buy it, share it. Make sure people know about it and we'll go from there. Um, thank you everybody that came in tonight and I hope everybody has a great night. We will see you back here Wednesday. Adieu.